direction. The violinist is a story that shows the different dynamics between a father and son relationship where we have a young boy who really wants to play the violin but his father just wants him to focus on school. So he kind of secretly goes behind his back and learns how to play the violin with his grandfather. For the crew it was the first time that I was working with the crew. We became closer and we start to know each other how everybody worked in different ways. The very first days was a little bit tough. Let's say it wasn't as smooth as the later days. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we worked very well. We were on 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 in pace. We were, you know, we I had Teresa, the UPM, you know, uh, always behind me, telling me the time, and Talia, the producer, also, you know, telling me we have only five minutes to get this done. So by the end of it, we actually learned how to how to work a lot, lot better. 33 since we have the setup and then she, he has to change again to 13 oh, okay. for so this Ralph stays the and Ralph stays with the same. So, so 13 we're going to shoot it. <laughs> I'm production designer so I am in charge of the props and luckily I know how to kind of tune a violin so I'm tuning it so that we can use it. Whenever you're ready. We had a mirror here and we needed to cover it, so I just decided to make a painting for Sebastian that he painted himself. Damn thing. There's a no. David, I need you to be closer to the fr to the frame. Again? There. On the set, I was kind of, let's say, like the boss of the camera department. I had my gaffers helping me, looking at the overhead diagrams of the lights and the blocking, so we would get the, the shots right how Nick wanted. So I figured that working with a 5D was the closest thing to being, you know, I don't have to learn anything out of that camera. I know how to work it out. I know, I know the good things that it has, and I know the bad things that the, the 5D has. I thought about a story about an artist, uh, no matter the obstacles that he has to go through, he still believes that he can do it. So that's when I created Sebastian, the character of Sebastian. The story is very interesting because, like, I haven't heard of a family not supporting them, each other, so. What? I don't care about these stupid grades. I want to play the violin. You're not playing with us anymore! No! We got an HD, baby. Yeah. I guess he loves him so much and he wants his kid to do so good that frustrates him. And that last scene that we sh filmed about me going at it and breaking the violin, uh, it's, it's frustration. It's that passion that he has, I, 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 I identify with that. It was, it was hard to capture how Sebastian felt when the violin breaks. I mean, the whole world of his come down, comes down. And I try to use violins very high in a way that um, they just express the silence and the sensitivity of what Sebastian is feeling at that moment. So then I had to create an obstacle for Sebastian. So that's when I created Sebastian's father, the character of Will. The reason. The reason that actually conflicts with the love that the kid has. Sebastian! Yes, Dad? Did you finish your homework? And at the end, I have to connect the character that connects both of, of them. Uh, a character, the character of Peter, the grandfather. I need to rest. Yeah, I, but I uh, just rest. make that pause. Like, I, I need, I need to, to rest. rest. Okay. Okay? okay. That, was, that was great. Okay. So, so it's bad for like, <laughs> wake up, I'm going to see him, and you're going to smile. Because he's like telling you to go to the park. Okay, this is part of oh, the okay, montage. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. that's okay. without sound. Okay. So when you see him, smile. This character is about that in society, he never makes it as an artist, but it's still he believes that he can do what he wants to do. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's a family type of film, and I like the, uh, the, the relationship uh, with uh, the father and the son, the grandson, and it makes for, a, I think, appealing uh, story.
I'm fine now. Oh, I love uh, Ralph. He plays Peter, my father, in the in the, in the movie, and uh, it's a really fun guy to be around. Uh, he has this passion for life, and he. We're talking about wine and his enthusiasm for tequila and going down to Mexico to do a little tour. And I, I enjoy that about him. He's a freewheeling man, uh, but he has a lot of years of acting experience as well. So you get to talk about a lot of stuff that he did. I mean, for instance, he was in the set of Blade Runner back in 1982. And he was telling me about that story, right? Yeah, it's, it's fun. I think David and Barry, I call him are very nice. They have supported me this entire time, so. Here's, here's me. <laughs> this is 1957. <laughs> see, how, see what this business does to you? <laughs> it ages you real fast. <laughs> well, I like the idea that it's a small cast, like I say, with, with uh, the gentleman, uh, David, who uh, plays my son, and then my grandson, his name is Sean. You know, I mean, what it's uh, even though it's a serious drama, uh, just just working with with the actors, I, I like the fact that they have a sense of humor, so we can kind of kid around, uh, you know, during the lunch break and. Uh... <laughs> 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 Let him blame the violin the right way, dude. So you know, a musician. You know... Can you can you go like this? Uh, no, you're not gonna play your the, now. the master shots. I want to see. You have to play basically the the whole piece. Yeah, it doesn't no, matter that, that you don't like know, now, but it's still, unless, I want you to you look at him, how, do, how you can play it, how uh, do basically how he plays it, okay, okay. so yeah, the movements, uh, so you can copy the so movements. So just stay him? Right? Yeah, yeah, just stay him and look no, at him, just, okay. and then you're going to change. Stream yeah. light, stream shadow there. You think oh, nobody's gonna I see, I no, see, the shadow. That's something I should. No, no, yeah, yeah, so that's not going to look very... How much the bouncer can... Of course, I plan A was to get a K that can act, and played the violin, but that never happened. So my plan B was to get a kid that can act and a kid that can play the violin. So then we can do movie magic in the film. So when we started to do casting calls, I began to post casting calls also for young musicians that they can play the violin. Colin Cap, number 24. He came to the audition, he played a piece, and that was wonderful. At first, the recording process, it seemed a little scary because the piano was in one room and I was in another. So I was wondering how I, how I was going to cue the piano in or start with the piano on time so I could make the recording the best. But then they gave me the headphones and that was pretty cool. It, it was definitely a great experience. I, I think it was fun and yeah, I definitely do it again. It was interesting because that's the first movie I've done it like that because I haven't had someone else do my role like Play, like, if I can't do something, um, they would tell me how to do it, but um, since I don't know how to play the violin, um, Colin, Colin did it for me, so it was interesting. It was a new experience. Uh, today is this day that we're scoring the film. Uh, here Facundo composed the music, and we'll be recording with Kristen and two violinists, and Francis and Idanis, and Phil is helping us out to record the whole music for the film. Yeah, she's happy to be in the temple with, with I, Francis. I know, yeah. Because it follows the same one, two, three, four. It's the difference between a film composer and a composer itself is like uh, the film composer really makes the music for the film. Mostly it's just subtle melodies that emphasize the scene of what's happening in the story and they just tell how alive the music is. <laughs> Okay. Cut. <laughs> right. Okay, we're through with this.